the Make Share Grow podcast. I'm artist Julie Marriott, and I created this podcast to share behind the scenes stories of art, craft, and the creative process. Hey guys. Today on the podcast, I'm starting a three-part series called Why I Paint. What gave me the inspiration for this was I was listening to one of my favorite painting podcasts, The Savvy Painter, and the host asked one of her guests this really interesting question. She asked, what are you searching for when you paint? I thought that that was a really intriguing question. I never really thought about my painting practice in those same terms. What are you searching for when you paint? In other words, why do you paint? What is it that you're aiming for when you are making this piece or any piece? So I thought that it would be a fun opportunity to share in a few episodes some of the main reasons why I paint. So for the next three episodes, I'm going to talk about two reasons per episode. So the first reason today is bold contrasts. I love using bold contrasts in my work. I didn't really realize this until I started teaching workshops and I realized that I used different kinds of contrasting elements and colors to help my students problem solve in their own paintings. And that just made me realize, oh, this is basically how I think about things when I'm painting as well. The different types of contrasts I think about are light and dark contrasts. So essentially just pairing up very light areas or even medium value areas of color up against dark areas of color. I just love that punchiness, that pop that happens. One of my favorite things is painting a light, pale sort of flower with navy blue leaves all around it. That is just something that makes me so happy. Once I started painting dark blue leaves, I can never go back because they're just such a great dark contrasting color. So that's what I mean by bold contrasts with light and dark. The second kind of contrast I like to use is the contrast between warm and cool colors. So the color wheel has generally a warmer side, which are the yellows, oranges, and reds, and then a cool side, which are the blues and the greens and the purples. And so thinking about it that way, I will paint flowers predominantly in warmer colors, and then I'll use a mixture of warm and cool leaves around them. It's really interesting because I will start out my paintings most often doing all of the florals first, and then I'll fill around the florals with my leaves. And before the leaves are in there, I usually am not liking the painting at all. I go, oh, this is such a warm colored painting because all of the flowers are warm colors and I'm just craving for this balance, this contrast of the cool colors. And then once I put the leaves in, I go, ah, everything is better. Those flowers were not all messed up. They just needed the contrast of the leaves, the cooler colors around them. So it's funny just thinking about that and my craving for contrast in that way. And then the third contrast that I think about when I'm painting are soft and angular shapes. Because my primary subject that I paint are flowers and plants and leaves and things like that, I usually am coming up with different types of shapes of those plants and flowers that have very contrasting sorts of shapes. So really angular flowers. You might notice that I use proteas a lot in my paintings. I love how jagged they are. They have these crazy, spiky, triangular sort of petals coming off of them. And they're really unlike any other kind of flower that I've seen. So I love pairing them with the softer, more traditional round sorts of flowers like peonies and poppies and roses and ranunculus. All of those more round shaped ones look so nice up against these crazy angular proteas. The other kind of shapes that I use are in my leaves. I'll use very rounded, almost like soft oval sorts of leaves. And then I'll do these other like more 
frond kind of bunches of leaves that are very long and jagged, much more angular and long sorts of linear shapes versus softer, rounder shapes. The second reason why I paint, one of the things I'm searching for when I paint is wild abundance. When I paint, I'm a total maximalist. I love to keep adding and adding to my composition until every little gap is filled with a colorful shape or stroke. I'm looking to create a feeling of generous abundance, the feeling of a gardener coming home with their arms literally overflowing with flowers or produce, that feeling of a garden that is thoughtfully ordered but has spilled out onto the paths and has grown a bit wild. I just love grouping tons of flowers all together, tons of leaves. I just go overboard a lot of the time, but I've grown, I've come to peace with it that it's like, it's okay to cram one more thing in here. I really don't need that much eye space to rest in my paintings. <laughs> so if you notice, especially the garden girls that I paint, I love playing with this thought of wild abundance because it literally is a person holding an abundance of flowers. And the abundance is so huge that it's covering up most of the person. You don't ever see their faces. They're holding this huge bundle of flowers in front of their body, and it's just covering up everything but their arms and the lower part of their torso. It's like they went to the farmer's market and they just bought so many flowers, you just can't even handle it all. So that is the wild abundance that I'm looking for in my paintings. It's funny, I haven't always realized this about my artistic voice, and that's something that I think is also a theme showing up in what I'm talking about. Most of my observations are coming with reflection and time looking back over what I've created. So this love of wild abundance is something I had to look at my work and recognize, then more thoughtfully cultivate from then on. It's like my own type of gardening in a way. This wraps up my first two reasons of why I love to paint so much. Thanks for joining me this week, and I will see you next time as I continue the series. Thanks for listening to Make Share Grow. You can keep up with the podcast and my artwork on my website, juliemarriottart.com, and on Instagram at juliemarriottart.com.